Hello everybody, I'm Dino Comics Forever and welcome to Let's Draw Jubilee. One of my favorite, well, a lot of the X-Men characters are my favorite, but one but Jubilee alongside Rogue and Storm are my uh, top favorites. And I drew Storm a long time ago, but I didn't exactly uh, make a video of that because I didn't know how it, how to at the time. So, you know what? Let's uh, indulge the 90s with uh, Jubilee. I'm doing a version of her from the 90s cartoon because that's the that's actually the the cartoon that introduced me to the Marvel Universe. I mean, when I was living in the Philippines, they, uh, back in the 90s, obviously, the go what I call the golden age of cartoons, or Saturday morning cartoons, at least. And that's where I saw uh, the old X-Men cartoon. And I really loved it, because, I mean, one of the cool things about that cartoon was it didn't talk down to the audience in the sense uh, that it had all these uh, moral lessons jack shoved into your face, but more in the sense that it actually, you know, dealt with the fact that mutants were, you know, discriminated against. There were lots of racial and special uh, prejudices against them. I mean, people had either, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, okay attitudes toward them, or just, you know, plain out hated them to the point where they, you know, enacted acts of pure violence on them. And I thought that was amazing, because, I mean, not only did it deal with that, but it also dealt with the personal issues of the X-Men, you know, like the whole love triangle between Jean Grey, Wolverine, and uh, Cyclops, as well as the fact that uh, all the different uh, illegitimate children Magneto had, you know, so the, the friendship slash rivalry between uh, Magneto and Professor Xavier. And I thought that was really cool. And I'm actually kind of pissed off that a lot of cartoons nowadays don't exactly do that. They usually, usually just pander to the lowest common denominator in the sense that they just be weird for the sake of weird. I mean, I know that cartoon, a majority of cartoons are meant for kids. But also keep in mind, I mean, a lot of people watch cartoons to be entertained. I mean, if you look at things like the, uh, the new Voltron cartoon, I mean, that's really, that's fucking awesome. And also things like anime, they do not not in the slightest sense talk down to their audience because I mean I've I've watched a lot of anime and a lot of that is fucking dark and I mean it would not kill the western industry to kind of go in that direction because I mean look at uh, animation movies like food um, no, not, not food thing food fight god no not food fight uh, sausage party I mean yeah it's a comedy but it's definitely not for kids lord knows it, it should never be meant for kids but, I mean, it gives a sense that, you know, adults can enjoy cartoons just as much as kids if, you know, if you cater to that. And I know I'm kind of rambling on about the my hatred of current cartoons nowadays and kind of going off topic from the drawing itself. But, I mean, everybody by now knows this process of the drawing. I mean, it's nothing new now, is it? And actually, when it comes to the shading of this drawing, I actually uh, used a different brush, and I'm... And I think with a lot of other uh, drawings or artwork, I'm going to use that brush from now on. Because it gives a nice uh, painted uh, texture. And okay, yes, I still need some practice on it when I attempt to uh, some art without the heavy black line. Because I, at times I think that's a bit of my weakness, that I use too much of the heavy black line. or Because then I feel like, okay, yeah, I'm just hiding the fact that maybe I don't know how to do shadows that well. Or maybe I'm just, you know too scared to actually attempt really layered shadows, but I'm gonna try it one day, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fail miserably, so you know what? Be patient with me. Oh, on a side note, for those uh, living in Holland, uh, next weekend, on the 15th of June, oh yeah, on the 15th of June, I'm gonna be at the World Forum in The Hague at AnimeCon, one of my favorite conventions of the year. It's, uh, as you can guess, it's themed Toward, it's catered towards anime and manga, but also, you know, lots of superhero stuff as well. Just anything in pop culture. And I'm going to be there with my editor and my uh, publisher, Comics of the West. So, you know what? If you're in the neighborhood, please stop on by and say hello. I mean, I'd really appreciate it. Oops, sorry, Burpee. And hopefully, and I pray to God that nothing stupid happens, I'll be there premiering my very first, well, mini-comic, Drakan, Chapter 1 in black and white. And it's cheaper to do than in color. I mean, eventually the color version will come out and it will be just more than just chapter one. It'll be chapters one and two. Be a complete book, but you know what? 
this is, you know, to test out the waters, see if people will be interested, and also to see, you know, how many I can sell. So I made a couple, so hopefully that'll, uh, you know, spark some interest. Okay, part one is done. Now we're moving on to part two, the shading. So like I said before, I'm using a different uh, brush. It's one of the standard brushes in uh, Photoshop, but I like it. And I mean, I set the opacity to 50%. I set the uh, transfer on so it has a nice sort of like build up to it. And it works out quite nicely. And of course I use a sort of a warm shadow in the sense that it's a gray tone with some red in there. So it really uh, you know, comes off as a warm color. And later on I put some blue and some red on the edges of the piece to give off some warm and cold tones. Somebody suggested I do that a long time ago. I completely ignored them, and I'm very sorry to whoever said that. Maybe it hurt my opportunities in getting a job, but you know what? Who cares? I'm doing it now, and that's all. That's the best we can hope for. And at times I kind of worry, like, where, when am I adding too much shadow, and when am I not adding enough? And at times it's just a, it's a bit of a feeling. You have to see how it goes. Sometimes it'll work out, sometimes it doesn't, but I mean, it's also a personal effect. And as you can see, I also use, I use the eraser tool a lot, but that's because I, when it comes to the basic uh, shape of the shadow, I just slap it on there with a whole, with a big brush of the normal brush of the color on a multiply layer. Then with the eraser tool, I also set it the same brush, opacity, 50%. I turn on the transfer, that way I can help kind of sculpt the shadow in the form I want it to be. And I kind of forgot what texture or what kind of material her coat was made out of, Jubilee's coat. I always thought it was a sort of like a, a yellowish rubber or latex thing, but then I'm thinking, you know, it's coat, she probably bought it off the rack, so maybe just got normal uh, cloth texture. So, you know, I kind of winged it, didn't make it too shiny, because then it'll look wet and that's not what we want to have. I mean, eventually I'll make a, a fan art of a character who's, you know, completely wet in the sense that she got out of the pool or something to really play with the uh, light effects when it comes to, uh, uh, the, well, yeah, the lighting effects I can do on shiny objects. Oh yeah, here on the leg, I kind of thought, you know what, it's a bit too black, so I used my eraser tool and I got rid of a bunch of uh, the black and added in some, uh, a bit of a shine effect. I just used the same color as the rest of the uh, leg, put in a little bit of shadow so it comes off as a sort of like a it's tight, but also kind of shiny in that sense. Of course, you know, sculpting the shadow here and there. La, 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 la. I mean, in this sense, you got a lot of freedom for what you want to do, and thanks for the thick lines, people don't exactly pay too much attention to the little mistakes here and there, or that the fact that it looks really constructed. But who cares? Okay, with the highlight layer, you set it to screen, you use a, a lighter shade of the uh, pinkish gray, and you just go to town on the places you think need uh, light. Mostly fr closest to the light source, those get the highest amount of highlights. And the things that are away where the shadow is thickest or black, those should not get any uh, lighting effects whatsoever. And keep in mind, light bends, so if, it's, if there's a round thing, you're going to have to put some shine on both edges. A lot of shine on the edge that's closest to the light source, and a very small amount of shine on the part that's away from it, because that's round, so light wraps around things. Okay, we're nearly done with this part, and then I think, as I remember correctly, I added in those uh, little bits of blue and, and red tones to show off uh, the environment. Yeah, here we go. I set my uh, layer to lighten, then I used a very light blue tone. And of course, like with the highlights and other stuff, I kind of added in where I think it should be, mostly on the bottom of the image, you know, places where uh, there won't be any warm stuff, because uh, Jubilee's power are these sort of fireware sparks that come from her hand, so her hand should get a majority of the uh, warm tones. Well, basically her upper body should get a majority of the uh, warm tones. And that you just do on the same layer, and then I uh, kind of played around with uh, sort of a, an, a general tone to the, on to the image. And here I kind of messed up a bit, because I tried to uh, recreate the sparks as best I could. This attempt was okay, but it didn't exactly uh, work out well, so I found a brush that I thought worked best, and I went to that one instead of this. This was too many sparks. This was too many sparks. Then I found this brush. It also didn't work out. A couple more brushes. Snowflakes. I didn't know why, but you know what? That happened. This was the brush I liked. I wanted to have sparks, but not too many sparks. That would be a bit too weird. And also, it would be the main focus of the image, not her. her 
it wouldn't be her. she wouldn't be the main focus it would be her sparks and that's what i didn't want and okay when it came to the background i was kind of going like eh, what should it be it should be something cool in 90s then it hit me she's part of the x-men so a big red x at the end of it and of course my uh, trusty uh tapestry no not tapestry <sighs> parchment texture playing around with the uh, layer and opacity as well as overlay fiddle around with that and we're done and here we have one of my favorite x-men jubilee and i'm excited to see if they're gonna have her in the next uh, x-men movie i saw the trailer for uh, what was it called uh, new mutants which is supposed to be marvel's uh, first semi superhero slash horror movie looks cool don't think she's gonna be in it don't see how she could be in it but maybe she'll be in dark phoenix so once again thanks again for watching and i'll see you all in the next video have a good one bye